My favorite thing uh, about Synapse is the idea that ideas matter, that uh, big ideas matter, and that we find a way to say yes to these big ideas. The central question that guided our curriculum was how can we use our knowledge of physics and biomechanics to create an original obstacle design? There's a lot of different concepts. During STEAM this trimester, we've learned about angular momentum, linear momentum, and conservation of different kinds of energies. My name is Josh Levin. I'm 25 years old. My background is in mechanical engineering, but I'm also a competitive rock climber and American Ninja Warrior. So we've been working with Synapse School to develop a hands-on, project-based approach to learning through the lens of American Ninja Warrior. And not only was it interesting to look at American Ninja Warrior as the backdrop or context to talk about um, these science topics that we wanted our students to learn about, but it was also super tangible. 7A decided to do a project involving American Ninja Warrior, which is a TV show with obstacles and it's pretty cool. And this year they decided to repeat it, but they actually had four of the groups have it come to life. We reached out to Josh Levin, an American Ninja Warrior and engineer. We asked him, hey, do you want to do this project again? We're really looking to expand it. Then we made mini models of them, like scaled down a lot, so we could just see how it's laid out and how big it would be. And then we made a big one. Welcome to Trippers Fitness. We are um, our largest Ninja Warrior gyms here um, in Northern California and the United States. My friend Josh Levin asked me to show you a few things and then to show you a couple examples of conservation of, uh, of energy and conservation of angular momentum. Well, we went to this big warehouse and um, inside the warehouse there was like this massive ninja gym. We had like a few ninjas there explaining to us these physical concepts and showing us um, how that could be applied into the obstacles. It was really cool because it was real obstacles that, are, that have actually been on the show. It was cool to see all of what we've been like seeing in class in action and see somebody like actually do it. Yeah, and like us also actually being able to go through some of the obstacles and like try them, run up the warp wall, grab the different like rings, so yeah. all of that. American Ninja Warrior Project uh, embodies the best of Synapse's approach to project-based learning. We are, are really trying to get kids to engage uh, deeply in what they're doing. This project, uh, it, it goes deep into academic work around the physics, but it also allows them to explore it in a dynamic environment where they can actually build you know, uh, replicas of what is happening on that school. So they're actually getting that deep dive academically in sort of a class sort of based approach, but they can actually apply it. I think that just knowing how something works, not just like this works, knowing how this works and applying that to a project is really valuable because if you find another problem that you sort of need to understand why it works, there are a lot of problems like that. and. I think it's amazing that Synapse is teaching, is teaching us how to find that why. There's this linear lens with American Ninja Warrior and the people in the sport and how they come up with obstacles, but the kids here at Synapse are a blank canvas and they have this free, open mind to just come up with absolutely anything that they can create and that's why these designs are just, they're amazing. Synapse School. I'm Matt Eisman. I'm Akbar Bajabia Miller. We're the hosts of American Ninja Warrior. You know, we heard that you guys are doing a little obstacle design challenge. We just want to say best of luck and make us proud. And you guys are future Ninja Warriors. We'll see you on American Ninja Warrior. I think the value of this type of educational experience really stems from having 
two different types of learning environments. One being the in-classroom learning experience that's traditional in most schools, but the second being a hands-on approach that you really need to take what we learn in classroom and make it real. It takes a certain type of mentality, a certain type of energy uh, to really get these students excited about the things they're doing and see that, okay, if I can think of something, I can do that. And that mentality, I think, is so critical to developing long-term intrinsic excitement about the things that they do. I can't imagine school without it and I feel like it'd be a lot worse. I feel like if, if we had to learn from a textbook or the teacher says learn about this and then we go home and we Google it for homework and stuff, it's just not as productive. It's, it doesn't stick with you. Doing group-based learning really prepares us for the, like, the real world because there's a lot of like, you have to work with other people and collaborate. And I think that that's a good thing to prepare us for that. And it helps us compromise better and delegate better. And, like, Leading students through an experience where they got to practice those skills and mindsets, um, like optimism and creativity and all of our sort of learning outcomes that we like to focus on in a very real and exciting and engaging way. Um, so at the end of the day, is it about American Ninja Warrior or physics? I, to me, I don't think not so much. I think it's, it's more about how do the students come into the project and how do they come out on the other side in terms of the way that they're learners and the way that they're contributing to our community. Anyone I know who works on interesting and important projects spends a lot of time being frustrated and like the goal is to not not be frustrated that's what like creative interesting problem solving looks like the goal is to like develop the muscles that allow you to keep going while you're frustrated and i think these open-ended design projects where they really don't know the answer where there is no if you do a and then b you will get c uh, allows them to develop that muscle the longer you sit in productive frustration the more likely you are to succeed at any complicated unknown project. And all of the most interesting projects are complicated and unknown.